I welcome you all to the lecture number 17 of the course titled Psychology of Emotions Theory and Applications. So, we are uh, talking about we are in the module 7 and module 7 is about cognitions and emotions the interaction between emotions and cognitions. So, this is the third lecture of the module 7. So, today we will be talking about emotions how it influences judgment and decision makings. So, in the last lecture uh, we talked about how emotion influences memory in that context we have discussed the concept of mood congruent memory which basically means we are more likely to recall events or memories which are incongruent with the current emotional state so if you are experiencing positive emotions you are more likely to recall or remember positive events from the past uh, we have also we have discussed the different aspects of mood congruent memory we have also discussed uh, another concept which is called as a mood state dependent memory which basically means uh, the emotional state in which we encode an information it is remembered better later when the same emotional state is experienced so here focus is given on on wh which emotional state we learned something and correspondingly later the same emotional state under same emotional state the material could be easily accessed so here the uh, the content need not be emotional content could be any content but in the mood congruent emotions mostly according to the emotional state the contents the balance of the content is also similar then we have discussed uh, eyewitness memory in that context we have discussed that when we, somebody witnesses accidents uh, you know criminal uh, events or some dramatic events and they are recall those episodes what happens so lot of research shows that lot of errors biases and errors uh, uh, happens when we pe people kind of recall those dramatic or incidents of crimes we have discussed the reasons behind them and all the phenomena and experiment associated with all these phenomena so today we'll be talking about uh, the concept of judgment decision making and how emotion can influence that in that context we'll be talking about uh, mood congruent judgment as a phenomena and we'll try to explain why this happens and will understand various associated you know phenomena associated with the mood congruent judgment so as we have already seen that emotion could uh, influence or impact our attention our memory our perception and so on similarly emotions can influence how you take decisions because decision also involves lot of all these cognitive processes if emotion can influence all these cognitive processes like attention perception and so on it is also likely that emotion can influ will influence decision making because decision making also may involve lot of these cognitive factors so in this uh, basically we will be focusing on how emotion affect people's judgment and decisions and uh, this topic has gained lot of research attention because this has lot of implications how how emotion influences people's judgment because it has lot of practical implications so people in the field of psychology people in the field of behavioral economics also give a lot of focus on decision making processes how people decide and choose or in the field of consumer behavior how people uh, choose some product and so on so how emotion influences those decision and the choices even in the field of neuroscience people also looks at uh, the concept of emotions and how it influences various cognitive processes including judgment and decision makings now this area has witnessed kind of increasing number of publications and research uh, annually uh, so some data shows that you know uh, the research has more than doubled between 2006 and 2013 so this is kind of to till 2013 data we have i'm sure this uh, the number might have increased much more after that so the idea is the trend shows that the research and the publications in this area of emotion and decision making and judgment uh, is on a rise now when we talk about this word judgment and decision making uh, there are uh, subtle differences in terms of both these terms how do you explain them so judgment and decision making uh, technically they are different terms so judgment refers to the evaluation of certain aspect of a situation such as quality probability or importance so when we judge something basically we are judging a particular situation or a particular object or whatever it is based on certain aspects like what is the quality of that situation or quality of a product and so on what is the probability of uh, having something in a particular situation or what is the importance of this some kind of qualitative aspects or some kind of characteristics are kind of evaluated 
so that is kind of we make some judgment based on certain characteristics decision making is more about choices involves choosing between multiple options so when we have different options and you need to choose one that that is the situation uh, of decision making different choices and you need to choose something so that decision making judgment is more about some uh, evaluation of a particular situation particular object or whatever it is but generally this two processes could be very much related so based on our judgment can influences our decision making and so on so the judgment of the available options can influence the final decision so these are interrelated processes but technically uh, they are different in terms of what is defined as judgment and what is defined as a decision making process obviously all these cognitive processes that we talk about attention remembering and everything ultimately all these are contributing to our decision making process since emotion influence all these as cognitive processes obviously it will influence the decision making process also so the research shows there is a compelling evidence that emotions play a significant role in decision making even if you are not consciously aware of, aware of it so diverse research that will be looking at also uh, shows that emotion can influence the different kinds of decision making even though we may not be consciously aware of it even unconscious way emotion can influence our decision making process so we'll be talking about this concept of how emotion influences decision making through the concept of mood congruent judgment as we had already discussed mood congruent memory similarly we can have mood congruent judgment so it basically means uh, so the your current mood will influence your judgment so that is the meaning of so of your current mood will kind of influence the judgment and decision making that will that that you are likely to do for example if you are in a positive mood you are more likely to evaluate or make judgment with positive evaluations and judgments are more likely to happen similar to when we discussed uh, uh, mood congruent memory which basically means your current mood uh, you are more likely to remember things which are incongruent with your current mood so similarly you are more likely to make judgment which are congruent with your current mood so so just like uh, memory mood congruent memory there can be mood congruent effects in our judgments and decision making so it is for example a common uh, uh, understanding or experience in our life that uh, activities which appear unpleasant when a person is sad can become enjoyable when the same person feels happy same activity can become enjoyable when you are in a positive mood and you may not enjoy the same activity when you are in the sad mood so that emotions is influencing your evaluation of the same activity activity is same but you are evaluating it completely differently based on your current emotional state so that is an example kind of mood congruent judgment so this refers to tendency of individuals to make judgments that align with their current emotional state so there are many experimental evidences are available we will be obviously looking throughout the discussion for example uh, Johnson and Tversky in 1983 they did a very uh, kind of simple mood congruent judgment experiment of probability for example in this experiment they induce negative mood state to the participant by having them read depressing text so in the experimental condition the negative emotional state was induced by having them read some depressing text which could influence their mood in the negative way after which they were asked to estimate the likelihood of different emotional events occurring so certain probabilities task was given where they were asked what is the likelihood of that this kind of emotional events will occur in the future so certain contextual uh, materials were given so what how it influences their judgment and judgment in terms of the likelihood of occurring some emotional events so result shows the individuals in a negative state uh, ended to overestimate the probability of negative events so when people who are induced negative state they are more likely to overestimate the probability of negative thing happening in the future so that present mood kind of influence their uh, judgment while those in a uh, positive mode so they had another condition where positive mode was induced uh, they found they were more optimist than the neutral participants okay. 
So, uh, basically uh, different mood states were induced and they tried to see how this mood state influence their probability judgment of certain emotional events happening. So, this also showed the mood congruent judgment happening. So, uh, the people with a sad mood were more likely to overestimate negative events, people in the positive mood are more likely to uh, uh, kind of more optimistic about uh, positive thing happening. Sim similarly, different uh, diverse research shows that people make mood congruent judgment in diverse context, not just in the experimental setting. Diverse context in the experimental as well as uh, you know uh, the field studies and real life settings. People also mo make mood congruent judgment about their sensory experiences means whatever like what you hear, touch and enjoy all the self sensory experiences, whether you enjoy a sensory experience depend also on the on your current mood and so on. Uh, your judgment about other people is also influenced by your current emotional state. How do you judge somebody whether you judge positively negatively may be also influenced by your current state. Also how do you judge about yourself when you are in a sad mood obviously you uh, you like you are more likely to evaluate yourself negatively and vice versa and uh, whatever no positive mood will uh, kind of uh, you know in stimulate more positive evaluation about yourself. So, in different context uh, this mood congruent judgment has been found in different researches. <coughs> Research also shows that even momentary and unconscious emotions, unconscious feelings, uh, momentary and unconscious feeling can even have effect on your judgment. How do you judge something? Even though that feelings could be very momentary short time and very unconscious you are not even consciously aware that you are feeling something uh, positively or negatively you know very unconscious feeling could also influence your judgment about things so uh, how this could uh, lead to some kind of judgment one of the experiment that was done and later similar other experiment also show similar findings so uh, didenthal in 1990 did an experiment which shows this unconscious momentary emotional experiences can influence your judgment so this experiment the participants were shown brief flashes of images on a computer screen where a person was either smiling or displaying a look of disgust so very briefly flashes of faces showing two emotion were presented uh, brief flashes of images on a computer screen so, one face was smiling face, one face was face of disgust, it is a negative emotion, okay? disgusting face. So, some participants so, so were shown this positive uh, smiling face, um, but this was kind of flashed for a very brief period of time, the, sh the just shown and then it was ret retracted back. So, very brief period of time, this uh, two faces showing different emotion, one positive, one negative was flashed on the screen. Immediately following the first image, so let us say a smiling face was flashed immediately after that, it was not kind of it did not stay for long in the on the screen. Immediately after that, a long lasting image of a novel cartoon character appeared. Okay. So, one emotional face, then immediately on top of it, a cartoon character, novel cartoon character, normal. Uh, some cartoon character which were not generally uh, in the TV serials and other things, some novel new character was flashed on the screen and it stayed for relatively longer time. But emotional face was immediately uh, you know, replaced with this cartoon character in the same location of the screen. So, it kind of eclipsed the emotional face. The first image was effectively masked by the cartoon character to prevent it from consciously perceive even people could not consciously see whether the person was smiling or disgusting it was very fast flash flashing of image and then immediately on top of it it was masked by the cartoon character so similar several trials were given in which one type of emotional face for some participant happy face or smiling face with a cartoon character for some other group other group of participant this disgust face was eclipsed by a cartoon character cartoon character was saying but what image preceded was different for two groups of participant. For one, it was smiling face was kind of associated. For another participant, for other participants, disgust face was associated with the cartoon character. So, 
it was paired with the cartoon character participants rated their overall impression of the cartoon using set of personality trait then the task was there they were supposed to evaluate the cartoon character in terms of certain traits how they evaluate this cartoon character with certain personality trait ye cartoon character means they were asking how do you judge this cartoon character so that was the task given the result shows that when the disgust face was repeatedly paired with the cartoon character so for the group of participant who are disgust face was flashed and immediately cartoon character came people were not even consciously noticing it was a disgust face when it was repeatedly paired the participant made more negative judgment of the cartoon character so when they were asked to judge the cartoon character in terms of certain traits their judgment was more negative as compared to the participant when happy face was repeatedly paired with the cartoon character so when happy face or smiling face was repeatedly paired with the cartoon character they made more positive evaluation of the character even though car character was same for all the participants so it was a kind of priming that happened where even unconscious emotion generated by those faces people even who are not consciously aware of them influence their later judgment of the character so it clearly shows the impact of emotion how strongly it can influence our decision making and judgment processes so in many practical settings also emotions can play a role where we have we might have also kind of uh, have uh, kind of encountered or experienced them in our own life uh, in practical setting like that emotion can influence decision making is often utilized in various settings for example in lot of this um, retail businesses like shops malls and other thing people use uh, cheerful decorations and happy music to put customer in a good mood to increase their likelihood of purchasing things so first in generally the people in different shops and other thing they do the interior decoration in such a way that it induces positive mood that can enhance their likelihood of purchasing from a particular shop or something like that so people know this kind of things even unconsciously and they kind of try to kind of manipulate the mood of the people or the customers advertiser advertisers all the time use this idea of you know manipulating emotions of the people <coughs> in the advertisement so that they become more positive emotion is induced when they see the product so that is the main one of the main idea people use in the advertisement uh, where a lot of advertisers associate their products with happy scenes or uh, most of the advertisement you know it, it will try to induce some happiness in you where though some positive things will be shown to you or some celebrities will be uh, shown where you have some positive emotions associated with some celebrity characters so generally people uh, that is why a lot of companies and you know use celebrities for endorsement why because people have some positive emotional association with those celebrities so when they say this is a good product whether people may not consciously evaluate the product whether it is really good or not but simply because it is associated with a celebrity person with whom there is a positive emotional connection so people will associate product with that positive emotions and they are more likely to buy that so happy scenes especially in cases like cola beverages where there isn't much differentiate one brand from another so they kind of use even in uh, posters and other things some kind of positive images and so on so that you know people are more likely to associate the product with emo positive emotions and make more positive judgments uh, in terms of buying buying the product political candidates also use uh, manipulate emotions of the people in their advertisement during elections and so on uh, we all might have seen such things using cheerful music images to associate themselves with positive emotions and they try to show opponents in the ne with the negative emotions even people may not really you know may kind of detail where judge the positives and negative but simply because those uh, posters those musics and those rallies and other things induce some kind of emotions so a lot of time these things works actually uh, so uh, these influences are often quick and implicit people actually influences their decision making processes so sometimes they may not really evaluate every pros and cons but emotions they will induce and it will kind of change their decision making process and uh, while a rational analysis might not 
support the emotional associations, they can still be effective. In many times, things rationally may not make sense, but emotionally it is associated and people may take such decisions. So, how do you explain this mood congruent judgment? What are the possible theoretical explanation on this? So, we will see some of these possible explanations which can further shed light on or understanding of whole uh, in emotional influences on the judgment. So, in that context, we will be talking about four models or four aspects that can explain uh, the mood congruent judgment. One is called as somatic marker hypothesis, then we will be talking about effect priming, we will be talking at effect as informational model and then we will be talking about effect infusion model. This uh, some of these theories we have also discussed very briefly in the first lecture of this module which talked about the relationship between emotion and cognition the introduction part. Uh, here we will be more talking in line uh, using these explanations, these theories in the context of how it influences judgment and little bit more elaborately. So, some brief introduction was already given, but we will be talking more about uh, in more detail we will try to understand in the context of judgment and decision making. Uh, somatic marker hypothesis obviously is a new concept here, other uh, three are we have already kind of introduced in the first, uh, first lecture of this module. So, somatic marker hypothesis uh, is uh, kind of uh, explains this mood congruent judgment. So, generally human decision making is often portrayed as a mechanism driven solely by logical calculation of cost benefits seemingly detached from emotions. Generally, when we think about decision making, mostly we think decision making there should not be any emotion involved in it. It should be more based on cost benefit analysis, logical calculations and so on. Uh, but this somatic marker hypothesis and lot of already research evidence have shown that emotion is very important in decision making processes. So, somatic marker hypothesis clearly suggests that emotions play a very crucial role in facilitating the ability to make rapid rational decisions, especially when confronted with complex and uncertain situations. So, whenever uh, mm, we are in a situation of very complex uncertain situation, emotion can play a very important role in making rapid decisions with, within the short span of time. So, this generally the normal lemon idea that you know emotions are not in important in decision making is actually not founded uh, not much research evidence is not that emotion can play a very important role in decision making. So, neuroscientist Antonio Damasio, Damasio proposed this uh, somatic marker hypothesis. According to this hypothesis when we have to make a decision our mind quickly estimates the potential outcome of different options generates emotional response to these outcomes and uses these emotions to guide the decision making process. So, it very simply says when we are about to make a decision our mind estimates the potential outcome what will happen if I take this decision what will happen if I take decision some uh, mental uh, uh, no, po possible outcomes are kind of mind decides and according to outcomes kind of mind also generates emotional response to these outcomes. So, if this outcome x is there what will what automatically emotions are also generated for this outcome. If the outcome is y emotions are also generated for this y automatically because and this emotion actually uses and guides the decision making process. So, how you how you are emotionally feeling about those outcomes if I choose x or if I choose y how my emotions are generated for x how my emotions are generated for y will be very strong determinant. Uh, of my final decisions. So, that emotion will decide that final decision. So, this emotional responses uh, we have already kind of seen in the physiology chapter uh, lecture that emotions are kind of always associated with certain bodily and neural changes. So, this emotional response always includes some bodily and neural changes. So, when you feel fearful there will be heartbeat and some sensation in the stomach and so on. So, there will be bodies always involved. We have discussed the detail about them. Uh, bodily changes that represents an emotional response to an external or imagined event. The, uh, the Damasio called this as somatic markers. Somatic means body. So, there will be some marks in the body. Emo when you experience emotion, there will be bodily markers in the system or physical system. So, those are called somatic markers. These markers can be very visible in terms of changes in the facial expression or posture 
So, whenever we experience some emotions, facial expression changes, some bodily changes can happen which can be very much visible from outside or sometimes lot of aspects of somatic markers can be invisible such as changes in the hormones heart rate which may not be apparently visible in the outside. So, these somatic markers influence our future decision making process both consciously or unconsciously. So, this can help us make difficult decision quickly based on the kind of emotions generate according to the outcomes and the common advice just for example, people say follow your heart. So, this is a kind of indirect way of saying uh, basically follow your heart means heart is mostly associated with emotions. So, emotion guides our decisions. So, that is the whole layman idea or general popular idea that you know follow your heart in terms of making decisions. So, that means follow your emotions what emotions are telling you to do or go with your gut feeling. So, these are more these are all indication that kind of go with your emotional aspect emotions what what are your feelings about the different aspects of the decision that you are taking and uh, this may have some validity because the research shows emotion can play a very important role. Now, the somatic marker hypothesis also find some uh, specially one important part of the brain that is responsible for uh, this uh, somatic marker hypothesis this is uh, called as ventromedial prefrontal cortex. Now, research shows that damage to this prefrontal uh, frontal lobes particularly the ventromedial prefrontal cortex this the frontal part of the brain we will just show the picture when there is a damage in this part of the brain it leads to difficulty in organizing behavior planning learning from the mistakes. So, a lot of decision making process is hampered when there is a damage to the prefrontal cortex. So, we will see this the, in this picture you can see this blue part is prefrontal cortex. So, if you see the brain, so this is the front part of the brain and this part is prefrontal ventromedial prefrontal cortex. When there is a damage in this part of the brain people find it very difficult to make decisions because this part uh, is one of the important part for making decisions. Now, individual with this ventromedial prefrontal cortex damage also struggle to appropriately express and experience emotions. So, this part also has important emotional implications. People when there is a damage to this part they are not able to uh, struggle to find appropriately express and experience emotions also because emotions uh, kind of can be regulated by this part also. As a result Damasio in his somatic marker hypothesis hypothesis proposed that decision making deficits when, why whenever there is a damage to this part of the brain there is a deficit in the decision making process it comes from this part ventromedial prefrontal cortex damage because of their inability to use emotion as a guide for future actions based on past experience because the, the, due to the damage of this part of the brain people are not able to use emotion as a guide for their decision. Emotion as a guide for their decisions this is this ability kind of is hampered and we know in a complex situations we emotion always help us to take decisions quickly. If this part is damaged then emotion that the, the, the people are not able to use emotion as their guide to take decisions. So, therefore, overall decision making process is very hampered due to the damage of this part of the brain. So, those with uh, the damage to this ventromedial prefrontal cortex are compelled to rely on slow and meticulous cost benefit analysis. So, for every decision they will do lot of this cost benefit analysis which may take lot of time because they are not able to use their emotion to guide their decisions. So, this Damasio actually 1994 did a study on such uh, one of one, one of such patient where there is a damage to this part of ventromedial frontal lobe damage and this person was this was a patient of this damage. So, this person was unable to decide between two possible date for his next doctor's visit. So, this task of taking a decision when there was two days available and he was to decide one date for his next doctor visit. He was struggling to decide which date uh, he should go and he had a this damage to this prefrontal lobe, prefrontal you know uh, cortex or uh, ventromedial prefrontal cortex. So, he was not able to take this decision simple decision of choosing between two dates. He spent nearly half an hour listing reasons and ag for and against each date without reaching a conclusion. So, he was struggling 
to see what are the pos positives of going to this date, negatives of going to this date, all the cost benefit analysis he was doing and still could not reach to a conclusions. So, Damasio ultimately had to make a decision for him, he then experimenter kind of or whoever was looking into this person that uh, Damasio who proposed this hypothesis or uh, this theory, uh, he finally uh, not took a decision for this person. So, this shows uh, when this uh, emotions are not uh, people are not able to use the emotion as the guide to take decisions, uh, how the decision making process is hampered. This patient was basically using this deliberate sy system 2 that we have discussed in the last some lectures where we said there are two processing system, system 1 and system 2. Uh, system 2 is very elaborate and it you do all the cost benefit analysis to reach a conclusion. System 1 is more quick and heuristic. Uh, so, this patient was using system 2 to do all the cost benefit and detail elaborate analysis uh, on its own, uh, but he could not reach to a conclusion. In contrast, for people normal people who is in such situation may use just system 1. Uh, emotion heuristic and uh, they will just might say it does not matter to me, I will take the first date, Joby, whatever is available. So, people can take uh, this, this kind of decision very quickly, but for this patient it was not possible because somehow he was not able to use his emotion as a guide to making decisions. So, emotion, our emotional world is what allows us to make decision quickly and efficiently at least this, uh, this uh, theory and research actually shows. Now, emotions especially can become much more relevant in some context of decision making such as when there is a choice needs to be uh, kind of one need to choose between where there are preferences and values involved. In those decision making emotion can play much more important role as compared to other situations. So, whenever there are uh, we need to choose based on our preferences and values. For example, now, computer can uh, make complex decisions in terms of when the data are given, you know, it can take thousands of steps and make calculations and take decisions uh, efficiently in achieving objectives of existing. But when the situation comes where there is a preferences needs to be decided, values are involved, logical conclusions and computers may not work, you know, for example. Let us say if a computer inform us that a particular medical patient has a higher chance of living longer with treatment A. So, if treatment A is given, there is a higher chance of living longer than treatment B, but treatment B would have a better quality of life with the treatment B. So, there are different uh, kind of pros and cons with both the treatments. Uh, probably here, here lot of you know some value judgment needs to be done. A logical just conclusion or kind of computer calculations may not able to decide what is the best way to go. It cannot determine which treatment is preferable or in what should what kind of treatment should one should uh, kind of follow because something what is better is a kind of preferential kind of situation, you know people decide what is better and what is not better based on their emotional judgment. There is a value judgment involved in it. So, just logical conclusions and you know pros and cons analysis may not work in such situation. So, because there is a value judgment involved here, choice based on values are inherently emotional. Uh, so, such situation you know all even, even computer may not work you know the kind of thing. It can only say these are the pros and these are the cons, uh, but may not give you an appropriate answer based on what values and preferences you have. So, as uh, Damasio stated in his code, emotions are inseparable from the idea of good and evil means whenever there is a value judgment, what is good, what is bad, emotions are bound to come in the picture. We cannot decide without emotion what is good and bad. So, if decision involves conflicting values and personal preferences, when the values are involved, preferences are involved it is more sensible to uh, go with the or trust the emotional aspects or intuitions of people to make decisions. The emotions can play much more role, important role in decisions where preferences and values are involved. Several studies indicate that individuals who make intuitive judgment, intuitive judgments regarding subjective aesthetic decisions are more likely to be satisfied with their decision in the long run. So, when the people make 
intuitive decision is based on their emotional aspects. They are more satisfied in their decision making in the long run, especially when they take decision re related to aesthetic decisions or subjective decisions in their life where values and preferences are involved. Wilson uh, and colleagues in 1993 found that you know in one of the related experiment he found that introspecting about reasons behind one preferences when people think too much about why they chose something or whatever preferences they had uh, that reduce their satisfaction with the choice whatever choice they make if they make too much of logical analysis it reduces their satisfaction with the choice itself so, for example, in this study, the participants, this Wilson et al. study, participants were presented with two different types of posters and asked to select one to take home. Uh, so, some participants were instructed to think about the reason behind their choice, pros and cons and so on and uh, some kind of were uh, just intuitively took decisions. So, he, they found that those who were instructed to think about the reasons behind their choice ended up picking a different type of poster compared to the control group who did not make too much of logical analysis. The choices were actually different. So, they choose different types of posters to take home. When they were contacted later, three weeks later, the introspected group where they made lot of analysis uh, reported lower level of satisfaction with their decision of whatever the kind of poster they choose to take home. They were less satisfied. Uh, when people engage uh, in reasoning about their choices too much, they end up focusing on aspect of stimulus that are easy to express in words and may seem like reasonable explanation. So, when people kind of only look at why I made a choice in terms of rationality, they will only see the observable aspects which makes rational sense uh, and may take a decision, but actually the intuitively at the emotional level what actually appeal to them, may, they may not be even aware and uh, the decision may not be in line with that emotional aspects. So, people generally find less satisfied many times when they take too much of such route. So, this uh, however, uh, these factors may not have been the primary drivers of their initial evaluation. So, when they initially you just see something and like something, you may not all the time rationally explain why you like something. So, that intuitive decision you know uh, sometimes people actually feel more satisfied when they take such decision in situations where preferences and values are involved as compared to when you do all the logical analysis because you cannot uh, you know f logically explain or kind of find out every aspect of a particular situation only the observable which, which can be expressed some of the aspects you can only look at it which may not be the initial driver of your choice what you like some or what you like or dislike about something. So, this act of listing the advantage and disadvantages of option may make it harder to choose sometimes. It is not that we should not do this pros and cons analysis, but in many situations when you do pros and cross analysis too much, they make it more difficult to make choices because you have cho pros also you have cons also how do you decide. Sometimes the decision becomes difficult uh, for such kind of too much of analysis. The process of listing the pros and cons often highlight differences among the options, but the number of pros and cons may balance each other out. So, you may have 5 pros, 5 cons, then still you are end up with you do not know because both aspects are equal. So, making sometimes such kind of uh, things may make choice more difficult. Now, nowhere it is said that one should not do pros and cons analysis in different situations of life, but it only said that especially when preferences and values are involved probably intuition help us to make decisions in a much better way as compared to only focusing on logical analysis and rational thoughts. So, that, does that mean that we should not make preference based choices immediately without thinking about them? Should uh, only just make uh, immediately intuition based or should not think about them at all? No, we are not, no research is actually saying that. Weighting advantage and disadvantage of different option can be beneficial in many practical situations of life and we should do it, uh, especially in uh, like you know situations where there are a lot of practical implications are involved, decision like selecting what health insurance you should take, what kind of plan or choose uh, which candidate to vote for running the country, one should do all the logical analysis. Uh, relying on initial intuition may be most valuable source of information where there is a choices that are related to your preferences and values involved. 
in those cases uh, the heuristic pathway seems to be more efficient or people seems to be more satisfied with those kind of decision making process. Now, another uh, uh, so this is the this is about somatic marker hypothesis and uh, choice based on preferences and values kind of also explain uh, the some aspect of this uh, uh, mood congruent judgments. Another factor that can explain mood congruent judgment is called effect priming. Uh, so, this is basically related to the uh, associative network model of Bauer that we talked about. So, it basically says mood congruent judgment is actually a type of mood congruent memory only. So, whenever you, you are in a particular mood, it stimulates certain memories in accordance with your mood. So, positive mood, positive information you recall and then you take a decision which will be influenced by your memories, nature of memories. If positive memories are coming, so you are more likely to make positive evaluations and judgments. So, it is more kind of uh, the mood congruent judgment is a kind of uh, subtype of mood congruent memory itself. So, this suggests that one's emotional state could make related memories to the judgment more accessible only. So, if you have more thoughts, certain type of thoughts available, so that thoughts on those thoughts only make this help you to make decisions. So, mood congruent memory is involved in mood congruent judgment itself. So, effect priming basically means which is uh, associated with associative network model that we have discussed is actually uh, from there only we are talking about is proposed by Bauer that uh, that model it was proposed by Bauer in 1981. It is a phenomenon in which exposure to a stimulus such as words or images elicits an effective response can temporarily increase the accessibility and influence of related effective information. So, this is what we have already discussed in the associative network model of Bauer. So, that is basically talking about effect priming as a phenomena. So, it basically says when you are exposed to a stimulus, whatever stimulus, some environmental stimulus, some person, some word, some images, it elicits certain emotions, emotional response which can temporarily increase the accessibility of the memories associated according to those emotions and can uh, influence uh, you whatever memories that, that are accessed you know and which can influence your decision making process. So, in other words the effective response to one stimuli can prime. So, your emotions are stimulated by one stimulus you see something some images some situations it induces some emotion. This emotion which was kind of stimulated by one stimulus, it can prime or it can kind of induce activation of related effective information in the brain network itself. So, it, if it stimulates positive emotions, it can induce activation of other positive emotional node in the brain, which can then influence subsequent judgments and behavior. Whatever is activated that will be on only used in the decision making process. So, that is the whole idea of effect priming, it is a kind of a phenomena that is described in associative network model. So, for example, if a person is exposed to a stimulus that elicits positive emotions such as joy, this may prime activation of other positive emotional information in the memory. So, those positive memories will get activated because these are all connected, emotion will influence similar emotional node in the brain and this node will be associated with different memories. So, if it activates past positive emotional events and the memories associated with them. So, this may prime the activation of other positive uh, emotional information in the memory such as memory of happy experiences. This activated effective representation can then influence subsequent judgments. So, these memories that are generated obviously can influence your later judgments and decision making processes. So, positive emotion may make people more evaluate things more positively whatever stimuli they are may ju judging or may they may overall you know feel uh, happier in time. So, that can influence their decision making process. This effect priming effect has also been observed in many other tasks such as evaluative task when you evaluate something in which participants are asked to evaluate certain stimulus such as a picture or a word after being exposed to a prime stimulus or after being exposed to an emotional stimulus then for example, the last experiment that we discussed of cartoon. So, one emotional stimulus face was presented and then some, some other stimulus is presented after that. So, 
the past the initial stimulus will prime the uh, the judgment evaluation of the the next one that is presented because that that first one stimulated some emotion this emotion will influence how you judge about the next one so that is the priming effect effect the effective valence of the prime can influence the participants evolution participant evaluation of the target whatever is given indicating that the effective information associated with the prime has influenced in subsequent processing so that was very clear in the experiment that we have discussed of cartoon figure uh, that was also very clearly shown there now another model that can also explain uh, mm, this uh, whole mood congruent judgment thing is affect as informational model so we have kind of introduced this uh, model in the uh, first lecture of this module but we'll be more looking at in the context of decision making now this affect as information model developed by schwartz and Co Clore in 1988 proposes that affective or emotional states serve as a source of information that people use to make judgment and decisions so emotions always serve as a signal or information about the environment or the situation that you are in so you feel happy or you feel let us say fear then it is giving you signal that something is not right in the environment something is dangerous so you have the emotion is giving you a signal or an information about this situation and then you use this information to make judgment so if it if you think there is a danger it then you may take a decision i should run away from this situation because it is dangerous so your decision is influenced by the information that is provided by your emotion so that is called as an effect as informational model so according to this model individual use their current emotional state as a shortcut mental shortcut to assess the desirability of an object or a situation so they assess according to the emotions whether this is positive thing negative thing and accordingly they take decisions for example if a person is in a positive mood may judge social situation more positively based on their current emotional state whereas a person in a negative mood may judge the same social situation in a negatively so two person may be there in a social situation or a gathering one person may feel happy and uh, may judge the situation as positive another person may feel sad and judge the situation negatively the same situation based on their current emotional state in this way the affective state of an individual can influence our judgment of the situation so situation is judged differently based on current emotional states so that is how the emotion is giving you an information when you say if you experience negative that means it is giving you an information that things are not right here so you take a decision accordingly and judge that this is not a positive event so emotion can also serve as a shortcut for making judgment especially when the task is complex especially when the complex situations are there emotion can help you to navigate such situations more quickly using emotion as an information so in such cases people may rely on their current emotional state to make a quick judgment because many time we do we are we don't have the energy and time to look at every aspects of the situation pros and cons and all the rational analysis when the things are very complex because generally we don't want to invest so much of a time and energy so people take quick judgments based on the emotion in whatever emotion gives them as an information they will use that and take decisions so for example if someone feels good they may make positive judgment while uh, negative affective state may lead to negative judgment one people generally ask how do i feel about it if they think if they feel good about situation they think this is a positive situation if they feel bad about it they judge the situation as negative so it could be as simple as this this is how people actually take decisions in their real life however according to this model people do not use effect as information when they realize that emotion is unrelated to the object of judgment so this model also says that not emotion is not kind of equally in influencing uh, the decision and judgment uh, especially when they feel that this emotion is not connected to this situation this model is predicting this when people see that this uh, a particular emotion is connected to the situation then this situation judgment is influenced by this emotion but if they think this emotion was kind of connected to something else then probably it may not influence the judgment of a particular situation x when the emotion arose from the y situation so 
So, this model says that uh, there could be differences in terms of when a emotion can influence a decision. So, feeling can affect evaluation, but only when they are seen as a relevant to the judgment at hand. So, this is one experiment they did uh, by Schwarzen and Claude in 1983, which kind of shows uh, that when emotion can influence and when not. So, in this experiment, the participants uh, were contacted either on a sunny day or a cloudy day. So, there were two environmental condition, one was sunny day, another was a cloudy day and asked all things considered how satisfied or dissatisfied are you with your life as a whole these days. So, basically they are asking are you satis how satisfied are you with your life. One group of participants uh, they were asked this question on a sunny day, another group of participants were asked this on a cloudy day or a gloomy day. So, the whole environment was kind of different uh, in terms of condition. So, condition one participants were directly asked this question. Okay? In one condition, the, uh, the participants were directly asked, ki, how do you all things consider, how satisfied or dissatisfied are you with your life? So, they were, they were asked to rate about their life satisfaction, directly they are asked. In the another condition, the participants were not directly asked this. So, they were first asked, the participants were first asked about the weather. So, how is the weather today? So, they were first asked about the weather. So, the participant become aware of the weather around them and then they were asked this question, all things considered how satisfied or dissatisfied are you? So, in the condition 2, the participants were first made aware of the weather that they are feeling may be good or bad because of the weather. So, it was made explicit in the second condition. In the first condition, they were not asked at all about the weather. So, Swartz and Code, they hypothesized that only participants who are not asked about the weather would use their current emotion as for judging their life satisfaction. So, the first condition participant will only, this is their hypothesis, that the in condition 1, where participants were directly asked, taking together uh, everything, how satisfied or dissatisfied with, with your life the condition one participant will make their judgment based on weather or uh, based on the whatever emotions they have because of the weather condition simply because they were not aware that their emotion is generated because of the sunny day or a gloomy day you know so that was their hypothesis so according to them and the condition two because they just realized the weather and then they understood that they may be feeling good or bad because of the weather. So, they will separate it out and their judgment of the life satisfaction will be separate. So, this two condition kind of made these things very clear. So, result shows this kind of confirmed with their hypothesis where participants who are called on a sunny day reported greater life satisfaction than those called on a gloomy day, but only when they were not asked about the weather. So, the condition one participants when they were not asked about the weather. So, generally the participants who are asked, asked this life satisfaction question on a sunny day, they reported more satisfaction on an average when the many participants were asked as compared to participants who were in the gloomy day, but only in the condition one where they when they were not asked about the weather, but when they were asked about the weather, how was the weather, they became aware that they are feeling good or bad because of the weather. So, this feeling good or bad did not influence very strongly on their judgment because they separated this emotion is coming from the weather and it did not influence their rating of life satisfaction. However, in the condition 1, they mixed it. The emotion was generated from the weather and it influenced their life satisfaction judgment. So, when asked about the weather, participants were less likely to be influenced by feelings of the weather when making judgment of life satisfaction. So, this shows basically they are saying that if you become aware that emotion is generated from something else, then it may not influence in decision making in some other context. So, if emotion is generated from the X situation, if you are aware about it, then probably this emotion will not influence your judgment on the Y situation. So, this was kind of the data that shows sunny day and uh, gloomy day, how the differences were there in the two conditions when no weather was not asked. So, there was a difference when uh, weather was not asked. So, there was a difference. So, this finding generally the effect prime condition that uh, the theory or uh, associative network model that we talked did, did not consider this aspect. According to that model, emotion will influence your 
kind of activate all the similar node and influence your decision making. Here in this model effectors information they are making some conditional aspect that from what is the source of emotion if people become aware then the judgment may be different. This was not kind of predicted or taken consider or considered under effect as a prime model what that we have discussed which basically comes under associative network model. Now, the, the last model that can explain uh, emotion on judgment is effect infusion model. We have given the introduction of this model also in the first lecture of this module, but now we will discuss a little bit more detail. Now, this effect infusion, infusion model or in short AIM, uh, it is a psychological framework that explain how emotion can influence cognitive processes and decision making. So, all these models are actually in this context only, but their explanations are little bit different and they are kind of improving one over the other. So, the model proposes that effect or emotion can infuse or blend with cognitive processes or mental processes. So, emotion can kind of combine with your thought processes such as your or cognitive processes such as your attention, perception, memory and judgment decision making which can lead to biased or irrational decisions sometimes. So, when this is infused with your thought processes, it can influence your thought processes and influence the outcome of the decision making. So, it can lead to sometimes biased and irrational decision making based on different situations, not necessarily all the time. So, this model kind of integrate uh, the explanation of mode effects from the earlier two models, effect as a prime model and effect as information model. He kind of combined both the theories and try to find out the condition under which sometimes emotion influences decision making and sometimes not. So, this is more elaborative and taking different much more factors into consideration. So, this model has been successful in accounting for influence of mode on memory uh, as well as wide range of uh, emotional influences on social thought, judgment and behavior such as person perception, uh, likelihood or rating of positive or negative events, satisfaction rating of intimate relationships, uh, negotiation strategies and so on. So, diverse social situations this theory has been able to successfully uh, kind of account or explain how mood or emotion can influence different uh, cognitions. So, essentially this model seeks to identify condition under which emotional information is most likely to influence your judgment. Most of the other things are more general, but if, if you see the effect prime model as more like general uh, not looking into lot of co contextual factors, uh, effect as information was included few factors, but this model is more elaborate in that sense is kind of taken into more elaborate factors is most likely to influence social judgments and uh, cognitive mechanisms to facilitate the influence. So, conditions were kind of fixed under what condition, how emotional influence. So, according to this model effect infusion occur more when, so this effective influence of emotion will be occur more strongly when a judgment or judge, judge engages in constructive processing which involves the substantial transformation of cognitive comments rather than just reproducing existing information. So, it is saying this influence of emotion on cognition will be much stronger when we need to do more constructive, more complex processing of information. Lot of efforts are involved here and kind of uh, lot of transformations are involved. You cannot automatically just uh, go and take a decision. So, lot of effortful cognitive processing are involved in it. In those condition emotions will be much strongly influencing the decision process as compared to uh, tasks which are much more simpler. So, this is giving much more uh, because uh, this model also shows four possible strategies which uh, at a varying level of where emotion can influence uh, uh, decision making in the different uh, levels. So, these four conditions they are saying one is direct retrieval of pre-existing evolution. So, we will talk about uh, them in little bit more detail. So, directly you are retrieving. So, there is no effort involved. So, you have already a known uh, something is very clearly known to your mind and you are taking that information directly and making some evaluation. Second is motivation driven processes to achieve pre-existing goal. 
so you are motivated already there is a motivation to do something so that motivation is guiding it so in these two condition generally emotion you don't have to do much constructive processing or more detailed processing is not required uh, so according to this model uh, affect infusion or influence of emotion will be less here in this condition it may be there but it is less affect infusion is less likely to occur in this situation situation 3 and 4 are different here in case of heuristic and simplified processing when you use some shortcuts mental shortcuts here little bit more influence of emotion will be there and the highest number of emotional influence will be happening when there is a substantive and extended processing very detailed and complex processing are there uh, so these are high effect infusion strategies means in this cases influence of emotion will be much more stronger as compared to the first two conditions so let us uh, see this four so one is first one is direct access this first condition that we talk about direct retrieval is basically direct access what happens in this condition in this strategy involves retrieving a pre existing evaluation of a target of stimulus this can occur very quickly and with minimum cognitive effort so you don't need much mental efforts you know something very clearly it is there in your mind you just retrieve it no effort is involved with the mental level so this does not require any information search or generation bahut difficulty there is not much difficulty in terms of getting access to it so there is a directly you can access it so this strategy as a generally emotion will not influence in such kind of situations where there is a direct access is required for example imagine that you are a judge in a talent competition and uh, you are asked to rate the performance of a well known singer who have always been admired in the past so the singer is already well known people have been admiring it his skills and qualities are already known in this case you you already have a pre existing positive evaluation of the singer all the informations are there pre existing you know that singer is very good you know you don't have to really do lot of analysis to judge that person and your judgment may be influenced by this evaluation rather than actual perform performance sometimes or when you judge such candidates probably you know your pre existing whatever you get directly access and you just take a decision based on what you know very clearly so here emotions may not really influence much because there is no need because things are very clear cut there and you just have a direct access and take decisions the second strategy is motivational processing here also emotion may not influence much for example uh, this strategy involve processing of information in the service of a pre existing goal or motivation such as seeking approval of or avoiding rejection you know so you have some motivational processing you are taking decision or based on some motivation that you have so the decision is mostly motivational you have some already existing motivation the information processed is narrowly focused and predetermined you don't process much because you have already some motivation to decide in some ways it is already kind of motivation is deciding that so not much uh, cognitive effort is there and does not require much cognitive effort and information search similar to direct access this strategy also may not be much influenced by the emotional content for example here is an example suppose you are an, in the admission officer of a prestigious university and you are reviewing application of candidates home to give admission and so on so you are looking at their right qualities and criteria and so on one candidate let's say one applicant uh, stand out to you suddenly you know the name of one candidate just suddenly stand out different from other other candidates simply because it shares the name of hometown of your hometown let's say that person comes from your hometown and it stand outs to you for some reason so there is an some kind of probably biasness may kind of involve here in this case your judgment may be influenced by the fact that you have a personal connection to that candidate and you may be motivated to admit them so here your personal motivation is the deciding factor emotion may not uh, your current emotion and other thing may not influence much it can influence but it will be much less because you have already pre existing motivation that is deciding so cognitive efforts are less here it's already kind of things are very clear cut decided heuristic processing again uh, in this case uh, strategy involves relying on simplified and often unconscious cognitive shortcuts or heuristic to make a judgment while this strategy can be fast and efficient it also is prone to biases and errors 
So, many times we take immediate and shortcut decisions based on some mental strategies that we have. Here you process some processing is there, but it is not that elaborate. Uh, here emotion can influence uh, um, kind of uh, require some kind of thinking process, but it is uh, kind of more than the direct and the motivational processes that we have discussed earlier and does not involve very extended kind of processing of information. This strategy has moderate potential of effect infusion. Here emotion can influence moderately, not very strongly, but moderately at least uh, based on emotion you take some decisions. So, let us say you are uh, a manager at a company and you are trying to decide which candidate to hire for a position. You are short of time and you need to make a decision very quickly based on whatever resume you have. So, there is a position of available and there are few resume available and you do not have much time. Very quickly you need to decide because you need that person. In this case, your judgment may be influenced by limited amount of information and may use heuristics. So, immediately based on few things you will see and some, some candidates may look better in terms of few things. You may some positive emotions may be generated and influence the decision making. So, some emotional aspects can uh, you know, impact here in making a quick decision. You will see some things and it may stimulate some emotions and based on that you will make some evaluation. So, if some seeing the resume some positive emotions are stimulated probably it will uh, you will make a positive uh, judgment about that person. So, like that in the heuristic when you take shortcut decisions based on few information available emotion can influence uh, those decisions. The last one is substantial processing which is more elaborate processing extended effortful processing required in such situation arrive at a judgment. This may involve actively searching for and integrating new information with the pre existing knowledge to form a judgment. So, here judgment rec will require a lot of detailed processing pros and cons and you see every aspect of it. So, in such situations lot of generative thinking is required and high potential for effect infusion. In such cases emotion can have very strong influence or infusion or integration of emotion with the thought processes can happen very strongly. This, this is generally a counterintuitive prediction. Generally, we think when we do lot of strategic analysis, emotions are generally kept away, but this theory is predicting just opposite to that. That is saying in such cases, emotion can have a very strong influence and they found some evidence for it. Some possible situation in a from the real life situation could be like, you know, for example, you imagine you are a manager in a company and you are tasked to evaluate two job candidates for a critical position. It is a very important position and you have two person to judge whom to give this position. So, you need to do very detailed analysis because it is a very important position. You cannot just give anybody, you know. So, you have resume in front of you and you need to make well informed decision. Uh, sometimes there can be obviously, if you are in a neutral uh, state of mind, no emotion, obviously, you will do all the detailed analysis. But let us say you are in a negative mood state, how effect can influence? Let us say you are in the negative emotional state for some reasons. If you had received some negative news or a personal conflict just happened before making this decision, before may taking this task of deciding, you are in a bad mood for some reason, whatever reasons. The negative emotion might influence your the processing part differently. You might be now more critical and cautious in evaluating the candidates. As compared to let us say you are not in a negative mood. Now, you are in negative mood probably will become more cautious and more critical in terms of judging because you are in a negative mood. You will see all the simple, sim simple, simple things that probably you might have ignored earlier. Your mood may influence here in that context. Substances processing in this context would involve scrutinizing their qualification even more rigorously, being less for forgiving of any perceived weaknesses. Probably few weaknesses you might have even ignored earlier. Now, in a, in a negative sta mood state may lead you to even perceive small, small weaknesses which can become a source of rejection and possibly placing greater emphasis on potential risk associated with each candidate. So, more critical analysis probably would be there when if the person is in a negative mood state as compared to let us say he was in a neutral state or similarly positive emotional state may might have influence this whole evaluation process very differently. Person might have ignored many 
small small problems and other things he might be less, much more open if he was in a positive mood as compared to in a negative mood so in in such cases where there are a lot of generative thinking complex thinking processes are involved probably uh, emotion can influence very strongly like this so this could be some possible uh, example this model also says that two possible additional mechanisms through the earlier two model uh, it says uh, the effect priming can also influence emotion because it is integrating other uh, earlier two theories in this model itself how it is integrated so it is saying apart from all these four strategies effect priming can also influence the judgment and and uh, effect as information can also influence the judgment so effect priming occurs indirectly by priming effect related information and is likely to operate under substantial processing strategy so when substantial processing strategies are done generally this effect priming can explain uh, how emotion is influencing in this particular judgment situation uh, so when there is a lot of elaborate complex task is involved your present emotion can kind of influence all kinds of thought processes and influence your judgment second mechanism effect as information is more likely to occur when we judge uh, make judgment in heuristic processing where we are doing some mental shortcuts so your whatever you see a particular situation at you take few analysis shortcut analysis and whatever emotion is generated and you take this as an information and you take judgment accordingly so in under heuristic processing uh, effect as information can explain the the model that we have discussed can explain the heuristic processing so by incorporating this mechanism into the model this whole uh, effect infusion model seeks to provide more comprehensive explanation of how emotion influences your judgment under what condition it is more likely to influence under what condition it is less likely to influence so it is more kind of uh, elaborative and comprehensive model in that sense so with this i will stop here so this is how we end this module of cognition and emotions these are some of the most uh, significant aspects of interaction of cognition and emotion and how emotion influences cognitions in diverse ways uh, so with this i stop here and uh, this module uh, uh, will not talk we will not have any further lecture on this module so we'll start another module in the next lecture thank you